On a Monday morning at this New York City church, services may be over, but for some, salvation is just beginning. Families lined up around the block seeking basic necessities, support, and clarity at a nonprofit resource fair. It's a scene all too familiar across the country. Hotels and high schools turned into temporary shelters. Nobody's in charge of the border and nobody's in charge of the city. Towns, big and small, stretch thin. More than 30,000 arriving in Denver so far. Outcry from overwhelmed mayors. An international crisis of global population shift. No city should be going through this and it's not sustainable. The growing migrant crisis, the latest boiling point in America's immigration debate. Just this past December, encounters at the border reached a record high. One of the largest groups, Venezuelans, crossing over more times last year than any other on record, many seeking asylum. When someone applies for asylum, they have a legal right to stay in the country until that asylum claim is heard. The Venezuelan crisis is the biggest humanitarian crisis that most Americans have never heard of. Um, we know about Syrians leaving because of the war. We know about Ukrainians leaving because of the Russian invasion. But roughly the same number of people have left Venezuela. Ilari and Angel, both 21, arrived in New York from Caracas last year. Coming to America was never the ultimate dream. Es muy complicado tener un, una vida estable. O sea, es el agua, eh, la escasez también de medic medicamentos, medicinas. Once a thriving nation rich in oil money, Venezuela has plummeted into political and economic calamity following decades of corruption. The exodus about a quarter of the country's population. More than 7 million Venezuelans have left their homeland since 2015, moving to other countries in Latin America and most recently to the United States. They're running away from a situation that was impossible to stay in. And so they've arrived in the U.S. sometimes without a plan. And that's why this is the first time that we've seen migrants in a large number actually staying in shelters. Tonight, we're across continents, following families as they weigh desperate options. It's difficult to talk about what happened to you. Yes, yes, yes. Many forced to trek for days through a so-called highway of hell. Guerrear y pa'lante con Dios. They strive toward dreams that can feel further away with every step. People are on the move more than they have been since World War II. We're on the front lines in the fight to crack down on the human smuggling that is fueling record numbers at the border. This is our war. Even after a year in the States, it's hard to tell if life has gotten better for Ilari and her family. The foursome live in a room in this shelter. Ilari spends most of her days taking care of her two little girls, two-year-old Dara mm. and one-year-old Emma, a U.S. citizen. She found out she was pregnant with Emma while walking through the Darien Gap. Nosotros duramos siete días para cruzar eh, la selva como tan. Yo me sentía muy mal eh, físicamente. Este, me dolía todo el cuerpo, los pies los tenía hinchados. Uh, Ilari is one of nearly 480,000 Venezuelans who have crossed through the Darien since 2022. One of the most punishing terrains on earth, it connects Colombia to Panama, allowing people to eventually reach the United States. Seven months after crossing through, Ilari gave birth to Emma in the U.S. nacionalidad sino por la diferencia en el hospital de cómo fue todo a cómo hubiese sido en Venezuela. Thousands of miles from Ilari and her daughters is another Venezuelan mother, also in a foreign country. Buenos días. Dreaming of more. Es muy difícil, pero tú, o sea, tú te miras en el espejo, miras la cantidad de kilos que tú has rebajado, ahí es donde te das cuenta si hay una crisis. Milady and her family fled to Colombia six years ago. 
Her husband, Ugo, works as a delivery driver while she is up at 4 a.m. cooking stews, sauces, and empanadas on her small stove to sell. 20 calles, entre ida y vuelta, y, y ahí voy, voy vendiendo. Ya las en las esquinas a los... Sí, a lo, eh, en construcciones, Ajá. a los obreros. Acá ¿Qué? está muy difícil. El sueldo que, que, que uno se gana, el sueldo mínimo, no rinde. O sea, rinde para lo justo, el arriendo, los servicios y comida, ya. Short on just about everything, but love. Dile chao a tus amiguitos. Colombia is the only home little Miguel has ever known. ¿Qué prefieres? ¿Quieres quedarte aquí? Sí. Countries like Colombia and Peru have taken in more Venezuelans than the United States. We have to give credit to countries like Colombia. They've given temporary protected status to more than 2.5 million Venezuelans. They are providing health care. They are providing education. So that is a part of the solution, the integration of migrants into these countries throughout Latin America. It's a regional approach, and we need to support it. Brendan O'Brien is deputy chief of mission at the U.S. Embassy in Colombia. The U.S. government has committed almost $1 billion in Colombia's effort to resettle Venezuelan migrants. What do you think is missing from the conversation in the United States? We're talking about easing the crisis at the border. We're looking at expanding legal pathways, and that would be work visas or opportunities for asylum into the United States, right? And then in the long term, I think it's really important for the U.S. taxpayer to understand that their investment overseas at these embassies is really paying off because it, it's a lot less expensive to address this issue in these countries than it is at the U.S. border. So many migrants here in Colombia rely on the kindness of strangers just to survive everyday life. But it's also true that after years of hosting Venezuelan migrants, Colombian society as a whole is not as charitable as it used to be. And Colombia's economy also not as strong as it once was. Unable to make ends meet, Milady and her family are now trying to save money to move again and head north to the United States. ¿Qué piensas sobre una vida en los Estados Unidos? ¿Qué piensas? ¿Qué pasa por tu mente cuando piensas en los Estados Unidos? Una casa. ¿Una casa? ¿Una casa grande o chica? Listening to their children dream puts a smile on their parents' faces. But Dad Ugo knows all too well how painful the journey ahead can be. Two years ago, he headed north through the Darien Gap and made it to the border of Guatemala and Mexico, but he says he was forced to turn back by Mexican authorities. Cuando piensas ahora en lo que pasó, en su regreso aquí, ¿qué pasa por tu mente? ¿Cuáles emociones? Cosa dura, difícil, cosa que yo nunca en mi vida pensé hacer. Yo dormía en la calle. A mí me regalaron una bolsa de caramelo para que yo pidiera la plata en la calle. Yo no, no me salían las palabras para ir. Pues quería regresar a mis hijos. But still, the parents say they need to try again. Este viaje va a ser difícil para ti, obviamente, y para tu esposo, pero para los, los niños... Va a ser más difícil, yo sé. Más difícil. Sí, mucho, mucho más difícil, claro, yo soy un niño, pero el que quiere puede. Entonces mis hijos quieren. Y hay un dicho que dice, el que no arriesga no gana. Entonces nosotros queremos arriesgar para poder ganar. Coming up... Inside that treacherous journey north, the peril and the danger... Plus, what the U.S. government is doing in Colombia to crack down on human smugglers. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.